even though we will discuss them in more detail in, uh, in later on today. Uh, the structures that are available for Plaxis um, are the fixed and anchor, the plate, the geogrid, the embedded beam row, the interface, and the node-to-node -node anchor. Like uh, I showed before, there's a dedicated uh, option for, for uh, selecting the different structures. You can find them, of course, based on the uh, relevant uh, object that they're assigned. For instance, a fixed and anchor as an option to create one will also be in the points and a plate and the geogrid uh, or the interface, the node to node anchor and the embedded beam will also be in the line, in the create line option. So over there, um, you will see the different options. Of course, um, uh, for more information, you will see later today, but that's for you to have the overview what what structures are available in Plax 2D. Well, these are the ones and these will be the ones that we'll use in order to simulate the structural behavior of something that we have in, in, in reality, at least to simulate a behavior as close as possible. So let's see. Uh, I saw uh, that we have uh, quite some um, people voting for five modes. Um, that is correct. We have two blue modes and three green modes. So the two blue modes are the soil and the structure. And we have three green modes, which is the mesh, the flow conditions, and the stage construction. So as many of you might wonder, the, why is the separation? Well, the thing is that from the moment that you click on, on the mesh mode, as we'll see also today, um, uh, you practically move from adding all the geometry to your model, like anything that is related to the soil, to the structures that you have, and then you start from that point on, on using those objects and you can no longer edit them. And in that case, it makes also a nice transition from the place that you can add geometry to where you start working with the geometry that you have. The mesh mode, of course, is in the middle. It's the place where you will generate, in principle, your finite element uh, model, as we'll see right away. And this is the place where um, it makes the transition from all the geometry that you have to what you will start using in your in your model in your calculation phases so indeed five modes two blue three green moving on um one thing that i uh, mentioned briefly that was for the boreholes that's you that you the fact that you can import of course information about the boreholes well it is a very good question. It is also possible to import geometry directly in the structures mode. So for instance, you might have a specific file of, um, of an embankment that you have designed in, in any of the uh, variety of, of CAD software, for instance, or MicroStation or any of them, and you would like to import that to Plaxis. Well, Plaxis allows that. It is an option under structures, and there is also an icon in the style toolbar. And there, it is possible to import uh, different uh, let's say so from different sources formats like the DXF or the BREP or the STEP or STP files or even CSV files comma separated text so in that sense we can import geometry directly from any CAD software uh, so that that helps sometimes to save some time if you have already some some drawings but please keep in mind that and that is like a, a, a tip in general for the um, for modeling. Uh, when it comes to finite element world, we need to model the behavior that we need, not exactly what exists in reality. So that, for that one, when it comes to importing, please very, be very critical of what you're importing. Um, when you would like to simulate the behavior of a newly built house, for instance, and you try to, to simulate physically the building itself, believe me, there will be no geotechnical difference, no impact whether you will decide to draw a doorknob or a specific uh, window handle that is included in reality. We're not a visualization software, we're, we're a software that, that performs a geotechnical analysis. It, the information that we need to run the analysis should be uh, limited to the geotechnically relevant things. So when you're importing geometry, make sure to import things that are relevant for the geotechnical analysis. And for that one, you can do it directly uh, in Plaxis. So, so far we talked about soil mode, uh, where we define our subsoil. We have talked about structures mode, that is where we will draw uh, our excavation walls, we will draw our embankment, we will define our anchors, we will define our piles. Now we're, we're done with the model. We have finished with creating everything that is included, what we'll 
be included for our simulation. And now we make the transition to mesh mode. And um, what happens in mesh mode, first of all, and most important, uh, the moment that you click on it, automatically Plaxis intersects all objects. What does this mean? It means that if you have a specific line that crosses, a, for instance, a soil layer or something, it will partition that part so that you can later on select it individually. That is, for instance, like in the picture that you see on the right side, um, this is how we can define these different excavation levels. And how did we do that? Well. There are multiple ways. One way is, first of all, we draw the excavation wall, the vertical wall, as you can see. That's one line with a plate. And then either I create lines, geometric lines, at the elevation that I want, making sure to start from the edge of my model to the um, location where the wall is, the plate is. Or I can also even create a soil rectangle directly fully drawing the excavation step. And after I switch to mesh mode, what I will see is that these things now, they will be selected um, because of intersection individually. So if I just create a line, practically when you are in, in structures mode, you are not able to select just that first top um, soil rectangle. That is fine because intersection has not yet occurred. Intersection, I mean, all the objects that are on top of each other, they will be partitioned depending on if they are cut well through, then they will be partitioned and then it is possible to select that. You will see also that that will help us later on in the stage construction when you want to deactivate a specific part, for instance, you need that, that partitioning. And in this case, you can select that, that object in mesh mode. And since we said already that there are two blue modes and three green modes, all three green modes behave in the same way. So the moment that you are in mesh mode, flow conditions and stage construction, you can all select these different individual parts of your model. Uh, however, what's important in this mode, and that's why we need this mode, is to generate a finite element uh, mesh. And for that one, we need to determine specifically um, what is the the uh, a factor that we will use in order to determine how big the elements will be generated? Because of course, an element means it will be a, a, a triangle element, let's say, or a, a curved element if it is um, a tunnel that you have, for instance, uh, or a, or a, a, a tube, let's say. Um, it is possible to determine how big these elements will be. And we use some factors for that. We have a global coarseness. So when you click on it, and as you will see it also in the demo soon, and uh, this is very easily done. We have some, some um, uh, different definition, let's say, uh, by saying medium or fine that can help you generate some elements. Of course, always, and that is what we will do also in, uh, in, uh, in every model that we'll handle, you always need to check and inspect the, the mesh that you generated. You don't have to rely only on us making the good decisions for you. You have to be very critical. You have to check what the mesh is being generated. We will see that option practically output that we'll see also later will help us in determining what is the, uh, the, the quality of the mesh that we have generated. But in general, what you need to remember is that we have some global coarseness that will allow uh, this setting to let's say more or less um, uh, control the size of the elements that we generate uh, globally for, for everything, the whole model. Um, but of course, someone might say uh, that's, yeah, okay, I would like to be uh, having a quite fine mesh, but only where it is needed. And that is also what we say. The, the finer the mesh that you have, the more elements it means that you will generate, which means the more calculation time you will have. And sometimes people tend to think, yeah, but finer is always better. Well, finer is better as long as you don't have to spend more than, I don't know, like a whole day just generating, calculating a model that should have just simply taken maybe maximum less than an hour. So in that case, you need to be very careful. You don't have to, to have the most fine mesh, the, the smallest element possible that Plaxis allows, but you can have these different settings for parts of your model. So you can maintain a very large element size far away from all the action where nothing really happens because it's not needed for there to have big accuracy because nothing happens, but you need to focus on having smaller elements where 
everything takes place. So in this case, in the excavation bit, that is where I want to be very accurate because I want to, to, to follow and monitor my deformations in that case during this excavation period. And how do we do that? There's a local refinement um, that you can apply and that can be easily done uh, by just simply um, clicking on the icon as you will see later on their icons and then we have some nice color code to understand just by looking at it whether something is is refined or coarsened so what are the, the what is the color code well first of all green means refined and yellow means coarsened so green means smaller elements will be generated yellow means bigger elements larger elements will be generated the lighter the color goes the finer the elements will be so if you have you see here uh, uh, three different colors for green of course now you understand that the top part will be refined far more than the bottom one and of course the yellow at the bottom means uh, that we have make it a bit coarsened and as you will see if you click more uh, you will see brighter and brighter yellow color and this means even more coarse and that goes on top of the global coarseness so you might have defined a global coarseness and a local one the of course those two will work together in generating of course the mesh that you would like and if you don't want to have any refinement at all whatsoever then you can just leave it as a default it is or make sure that it is gray you see in this screenshot um, the option um, for the right top uh, soil uh, rectangle that's gray this means indication that it is not refined it will use whatever is used from the global so if the global says you have a fine mesh this one will be fine and as you will see and uh, you will get more experience with generating the mesh you might need to apply quite a lot of local refinements to achieve the uh, the result that you want but that's a bit of a trial and error procedure in principle keep in mind that you need to refine where there is generation of stresses where there is deformations that will happen like strains changes uh, in in all those cases this is where you will need uh, pore pressure changes this is where you will need to have a refined mesh in things that are far away from all the area of action as i tend to say there is no reason to refine those ones because it will only end up making your calculation much longer and it will take time first of all to generate the mess because it will need to generate hundreds of, of elements but it will also cost you some time which you really need and especially believe me when working with 2d in principle most of the calculations should not really take days uh, so in that sense keep in mind that you don't need to refine a lot you need to find the perfect combination which with experience and with giving it try trial and error you will find what it is uh, this is the part that um i i'm i'm stopping with the first uh, presentation so you have now a nice overview for the